Hi friends, hope you are doing well. I'm Dr. Ganguly. Welcome to my channel. So today I'm going to discuss an important topic which will come up if you are in academia for a long time and you are going to realize that it is often low CGPA students or students with low marks who actually end up doing well in research. And this is not only true for PhD students but also true for master's degree student who are doing thesis option which involves research. So let us look at some of the reasons why this happens and then we can learn some things from these examples. So the number one point is that CGPA or grades measure known knowledge whereas research involves the creation of unknown knowledge. So Whenever you are thinking of any class, what you do is that you go to the class, you attend various lectures, you read the textbook, you write good notes, and at the end of the course, you are tested on this in terms of a final examination. Sometimes you also have various quizzes, you have midterm exam, you have homeworks, you have projects and so on. But at the end of the day, there is a syllabus. The syllabus is the set of knowledge which you are supposed to master in the course and the professor is supposed to check the fact that you have learned this subject pretty well and at the end of this you get a clear grade it could be a a b c d grade or sometime unfortunately it could be an f grade also now what are the things you need to do to do well in courses number one is you need to be good at memory and rote learning. So you need to essentially learn a lot from the notes you take in the class. Sometimes you may need to read the textbook also, but most of the students I know, they typically read up some notes because the textbooks are generally very comprehensive and very thick and very detailed. Now, the second important fact is that you must have some idea about what the exams are going to be like. And so very often your capability in terms of predicting the exams becomes very important. So very often students who get A grades, they go through some previous year's papers, they talk to the senior students, sometimes they are able to figure out from various hints a professor drops in the class, sometimes unconsciously, sometimes consciously about the subjects which are important to him because even in a syllabus there are certain subjects which are going to be the favorite of a typical professor and if you can predict this you can get good grades finally one of the things about examinations is that they are limited in terms of time so it's helpful to be a person who does problems fast it's also important to leave out hard problems or which you find hard and concentrate on the problems which you know so this kind of management is very important in many situations you have multiple choice examinations and you need to simply guess the right solution and sometimes if you are a clever person you may actually avoid taking difficult courses given by difficult professors and in that process your CGPA will look very good but maybe you have not got a lot of knowledge to back it up. So these are some of the problems which precludes GPA from being used as the best measure as far as research is concerned. Now the second issue is about sprint versus marathon and typically if you look at coursework it's like a sprint it's like a 100 meter race so what happens is that this is held in a semester there are four months very quickly the professors ramp up in the class they give some assignments they give midterm exam quizzes and before you know it the semester is coming to an end there is a final and then you are done with this subject for a long time to come and in many cases your entire knowledge in these subjects may be tested in exams which are maybe 45 minutes long maybe up to three hours in length and so on so one of the key things is that time is limited in coursework but in research time is essentially unlimited so very often you have a lot of time to pursue a research problem and the fact that you are very speedy in terms of doing a problem is not very useful. So it is the proverbial hare and tortoise story in that the tortoise can ultimately catch up even if this person is a diligent person, maybe not so intelligent, but if they put a lot of time in the work, they will certainly catch up with the material required to master their research subject. So in fact, in research, 
finishing is more important than winning. That's exactly like a marathon where it's important that you finish the race. Many people unfortunately drop out of a marathon. So that's something to keep in mind. Now the third issue is fast versus delayed gratification. So whenever students do well in coursework, they have become used to getting relatively rapid gratification. So moment the course starts, they are looking forward to the first quiz. They are looking forward to homework assignments. They are looking forward to the various marks and grades they get in these assignments. So they are getting very quick feedback from the professor about their performance. Similarly, they give midterm exams and so on. And throughout the semester, they know how their performance is going on. Sometimes they are even allowed to drop a class if they are not doing very well. But if you are doing research, then you will actually get negative feedback for a long time from your professor, from referees, from the comprehensive exam committee and so on. And at the end of this, you will get one bright positive feedback in case your paper is accepted by a conference or certainly by a journal and this may take you one, two or even three years into your PhD to get the first paper in. So essentially the fact that core students require feedback at very rapid time intervals makes it very difficult to keep them motivated over a long period of time like three to five years and therefore the people who are low GPA students may actually be better off in these scenarios and what happens is that the high GPA students may try to get burnt out in these cases. Now the number four fact is that much of research actually involves experiments and what happens is that the people who do well in courses who have good GPA are often good in theory, they are often good in mathematics, they know trigonometry, calculus, differential equations very well or whatever be the theoretical underpilling of their subjects. But when they are actually confronted with the research, they have to often do experiments. Even if they do theory, they have to do a lot of programming. So some of the skills which are required in research are essentially skills which are not exactly measured through the CGPA of the students or the marks of the students. So what happens is that the capacity in experiments may be there for a student who has a low GPA. What is going to be more important for the student is persistence and sometimes serendipity. If you often see in research, random chance plays a very important role and many a time experimentalists sometimes stumble upon some important discovery simply by random chance or serendipity. Things are going on in their subconscious mind if they are dedicated to research and suddenly they find a novel and useful solution to problems. So many times things such as penicillin were discovered in this manner and so that is very important. One more fact of course is that some of the higher GPA student or topper types are very reluctant to seek help of anybody in the lab and in many cases it's very important to not have a big ego if you are going to progress rapidly in research because you are going to have to ask your seniors for help if you are going to make a lot of progress in terms of computer programs which you need to do for research or in terms of experiments you need to do for research or you may need the latex template of a particular paper or thesis. So again the ego has to be put aside if you are going to get things from your seniors and also from your professors. Finally, the fifth point is that very often a stoic personality is required for doing research and this is somebody who is neither very much gratified by pleasure nor is very much perturbed by pain. So this kind of stoic personality is somebody who can take the negative feedback which research often brings. You are going to get negative comments from your PhD supervisor, from your senior students, from referees, from the comprehensive examination committee and so on. And so in all those cases, you need to be able to take this negative feedback as part of your normal life. And very often the students who are all A grade students and the topper types, they are not able to take negative feedback. They need continuous gratification in terms of getting high marks in the quiz, getting top marks in the assignment, getting good marks in the midterm and so on and if they are not getting regular feedback in weeks or even monthly time points then they tend up to 
become depressed and they often can become quite demotivated. So this is something which can affect the high GPA students in many cases and we often see that the low GPA students do not have these problems and so they often come out as better students in terms of research. Now this whole theory does not mean that it's a bad thing to have a high GPA but do keep in mind that if you have a high GPA do not get attached to your GPA and do not fall into the trap of thinking that your grades reflect who you are in terms of research because research requires a bunch of skills, a kind of mindset which is actually quite different from what is required to be an A student. So you will see that many of the great scientists, Nobel Prize winners and so on, they were often relatively weak students when they were in high school or even when they were in college. And sometime even during their PhD, they started blossoming out. They maybe wrote a paper or two. And later in life, because they continued to work in a narrow research field, they developed greater and greater expertise in that area and became top researchers. So that is something to keep in mind that research is a marathon, it's not a sprint. And therefore, the people who win in research are those who can persist for a very long period of time. So I hope you benefit from this video and I will see you in a video sometime soon. See you then.